So welcome on board. Um, if you don't know me, Kevin Moore, one half of Big Dog, Little Dog, uh, a tiny two-person mental health and suicide prevention training company. I'll say good afternoon, but I know it could be good morning, good evening, because uh, I, I think we have got a couple of international visitors. Here's what I'm covering today. I do want to start by briefly looking at the latest suicide data for Great Britain. So the first couple of questions I'm going to ask you, I'm going to get you thinking about what's happened to the numbers behind suicide. And then I very much want to shift the focus to talking about suicide because we need to do something about that. So with no further ado, I'll fire up the inevitable deck. We are recording the session and we will be publishing this to YouTube. Obviously, your input will be completely outside of that. So it will just be me and my slides. So I'll fire up the deck, which if you want a copy of afterwards, just drop me an email and let's get underway. The subject this year for World Suicide Prevention Day is changing the narrative and it's something we need to do. We need to normalise conversations around suicide. So just before we begin, please have a look at these three vital points for me. And I'll just say again, we are recording the session. So if you feel you can't make it through the session, you can view that recording whenever you like. Now, this is the first of what we call quizzing ours. This is what's going to happen. I've got eight questions for you guys. And each time I bring up a question on screen, it will appear on your mobile phone. And I need you to respond. Your responses are anonymous. So if you don't know an answer, have a guess. Why should you take part in this? Well, at the end, we're going to have a winner. And that winner is going to own an exclusive It's a Dog Thing BDLD t-shirt. And just to be clear, these t-shirts are only available to people who win in our competitions. You can't buy them. So what do I need you to do to take part? Get your phone out, please. Get your phone out and open up your web browser. And in that web browser, please go to this address, wooclap.com. Please make sure you spell it right, wooclap.com. If you're tech savvy, you can do it on your computer, but it's handier to do on your mobile phone. Once you've got there and you're successfully on there, it should ask you for an event code. And the event code for today is Quizinar. Again, please make sure you spell it right. Look at the spelling on screen. Once you've put your event code in, hit the Go button, and it should then ask you for a username. This is how your name will appear on our screens if you're in the top three at the end of the quiz. So I'll choose the username Big Dog then hit that let's play button and if everything's working right you should be at a screen saying something like raise your head there's no vote in progress at the moment and i'll just give it a few seconds for anyone who's still going through those steps so wooclap.com event code quizinar choose a username and then hit let's play If you haven't got any of those details down, don't worry. Each time I ask a question, you'll see those details at the top of the screen. Here's how it works. I'll bring the question up. You then tap on what you think are the right answer or answers. You can change your answer, but then I need you to hit that submit button. Once you hit submit, your answer is final. And at the end of the competition, We'll find out who comes first, second, and third. And let me tell you how you win points in this competition. Not only have you got to get the answer right, you also get more points the quicker you answer. So have a look at the question. Have a look at the answers. Don't hang about. Get your answer in quick. 
let's get into it. Let's have our first question for you. Is it true or false that this recent uh, suicide statistics release from the Office of National Statistics saw the lowest rate of suicides in Great Britain since 1999? Is that true or false? Choose which one you think is the right answer, then hit that submit button. So far, I can see 22 people are connected. 17, 18 of you have answered now. Let's see how your answers are going. So the vast majority of you think that's false. I'm going to leave it up for a few more seconds because 20 out of 22 people have answered. So there's still another couple of people. Don't forget, you've got to hit submit for that answer to go in. A few more seconds as it's our first uh, woo clap of the session. And let's see what the right answer was. The right answer, the majority have got it bang on. The right answer is false. In fact, it's the highest rate since 1999. Let me show you how that data looks across Great Britain. And I've used the colours of the nation's flags. So within England, you can see far more suicide verdicts than in Scotland in blue. Wales in red. But of course, England is a far bigger country, so we would expect that. What's the change compared to 2022 in terms of number of suicides? All three countries went up. And Wales actually had the highest rate in the number of suicides. But numbers don't tell us anything, really, because they ignore the fact that England is a far bigger country. So it's far more useful to look at the suicide rate in these three countries. How many suicide verdicts were there per 100,000 people? And here's what the data was for 2023. So you can see, and this is a consistent uh, piece of data we see Scotland once again the highest suicide rate of the three nations and the final graph I'll show you on this how has that changed over the last decade again white is England red is Wales blue is Scotland you'll notice they've had their ups and downs but I'd really draw your attention to the right-hand side of that graph to compare 2022 to last year's data. All three nations saw a rise in suicide rate. And if you look at how steep that rise is, you can say that Wales actually had the biggest increase in suicide rate. So not good news for us as a society. Okay, question two. Is it true or false that it is somewhat unlikely that any of your close contacts have attempted suicide? Is it true that it's somewhat unlikely that any of your close contacts have attempted suicide? Still 22 of you connected, 15, 16 of you have answered so far. 23 of you connected now. We've got a new connection. Good. Give it a few seconds for the new connection to answer. Remember, hit true or false and then hit the submit button. Give it a few more seconds. There's number 19. How have you voted? Again, most of you think I'm telling fibs. And most of you are correct. Look at the data here, please, from NHS Digital. According to their research, one in 15 people in this country have attempted suicide. Just take a moment, please, to think how many close contacts you have. It's likely to be at least 15. So statistically speaking, it's highly likely that someone close to you has attempted suicide. Okay, question number three for you. Let's see, see how you get on with this one. True, higher, or lower 
there are approximately 375 suicide attempts every single day in Britain. Is that true? Or do you think it's higher? Or is it lower? Thirteen answers so far. Depending on the size of your phone screen, where there's three options here, you may need to scroll down to find that submit button. And remember, you can change your answer right up to the point of hitting submit. True or false, there are about 375 suicide attempts every day in Britain. 17 responses so far. We had 19 last time, so I'm just going to wait for a few more seconds. We're doing fine time-wise. We're at 18 now. Let's see how the 18 have voted. So the majority of you are saying higher than that. Two smug people if the answer's true, and there'll be one very smug person if the answer is lower. Okay, the correct answer is we have two very smug people in the room. There are about, statistically, 375 attempts every day. Let me show you where that number comes from. When I showed you the statistics earlier, in 2023, there were 6,834 suicide verdicts in Great Britain. Now, research strongly suggests that for every suicide, there are about 20 attempts. So if we multiply those two numbers together and then divide that by days in the year, that's what we get. About 375 suicide attempts every day in Great Britain. It's quite a number, isn't it? And in fact, if I take the maths one level further and divide that by the 24 hours in a day, we get this number. Or to put it another way, in the time we're together today in this webinar, 15 or 16 people in this country will have attempted suicide. It's a bigger problem than society tends to accept. Okay, let's move you on to question number four. True or false, conversations about suicide must be left to trained professionals. Is that true or false? Fifteen responses so far. We've been hitting 18. Our highest so far is 19. Laura Clark, I see you've just raised your hand. Can you keep it raised if you want to speak? Okay, thank you. Okay, we're still at 17. I'll give it a few more seconds. Have we got our 18th answer that we've been getting historically? There's 18. Are we going to get up to 19? Come on, come on. It's five people who haven't hit the submit button yet. Is this one true or false? Can I eke a 19th answer out of somewhere while i hang on in there let's see that the vast majority of you have said false and the general public tend to think that one's true but the answer is false and i'll show you why we need to make sure people like you and me can have these conversations look at this for a statistic this is of all the people who died by suicide, how many of them were in contact with mental health services in the year leading up to their death? The unfortunate thing about that pie chart is I haven't shown you the right chunk yet. That's the right chunk. Only 26% were in contact with mental health services in the year before their death. So three quarters of suicides involve people who weren't in touch with mental health support. If we leave it to the trained professionals, 
bad things happen. Yes, they have a crucial role to play, but we need to be asking that question. Now, there's a massive myth, the biggest myth in the world of suicide. This myth exists, and we need to get that out of people's minds because the fact of the matter is completely the opposite is true. Have a look, please, at that section I've highlighted. And thinking about some of the organisations that I know are in this room today, we've got people from East of England Ambulance Service in the room. How often you guys encounter people in suicide crisis? We've got people from Get Set UK supporting long-term unemployed with an enhanced risk of suicide. I know we've got Leon from my mind who carry out an MOT of staff well-being. And I know that his staff are trained to ask this question. We need to be asking it. So then the big question is how? So I've got a couple of woo claps for you now where I'm going to get you to think about what makes a good or a bad approach. Here's the first one. I'd like you to choose which one or ones here you would consider poorly worded ways of asking so you can select as many as you want this time make sure you're happy with your answers before you hit that submit button so it could be one it could be two it could be three it could even be all four which of these would you consider poor ways of asking someone about suicide Sixteen answers so far. I've slowed you right the way down here. This is a really good example of where we need to think carefully about language. We're up to our 18. I'm still going to leave it for a few more seconds in case there's a 19th or 20th set of answers. And once we find out the right answers, we'll have a think about each one of these. Okay, how did they score? So every single one of those answers had at least nine people thinking it was poor. So not one of those answers did you all think was a good answer. The correct which one or ones poorly worded, the answer is all four of them. And let's have a little think about why each of these is poorly worded. The first one, if you've done mental health first aid, we've covered this in the training. This is a legacy phrase. Back in the day when suicide was actually a criminal offence. And when we use the verb to commit, usually we're talking about crime. So it brings some judgment with it. Someone considering suicide is already feeling guilty enough without us adding to that guilt. Second one, what's wrong there? Never use words like success. We never want to use positive language when we're talking about suicide. Kind of makes it sound like they failed and therefore they should have another go at it language matters now look at number three number three uh, a close friend of mine recently spoke to their gp about having suicidal thoughts and this is what the gp said in return 
Now, I'm sure that the GP intended it as a way of getting the person thinking about reasons to keep living. But I noticed 16 out of 18 of you have agreed. That could be interpreted a very different way, couldn't it? So what's stopping you? So you can see how well-intended phraseology can actually be interpreted quite the other way. Finally, number four. We're back to this thing about positive words and suicide. Now, completing suicide is, generally speaking, considered an acceptable phrase to use these days. I personally would encourage you not to use a positive word like complete when we talk about something as tragic as suicide. So, key points from that. Avoid judgment in your language, avoid emotion in your language, and look out for how your words could be accidentally misinterpreted. Can we get you to do that again now? I've got four more phrases for you. This time, these four questions, which of these would you consider inappropriate? Again, you can choose as many as you like. Just to dispel that myth again, it is really important that we do ask the question, but we need to ask it appropriately. So which one, two, three, or four of these do you think are inappropriate ways of asking that question? 16 of you so far. I think we've still got another couple to come. I'll leave it hanging. We're doing fine time-wise. We're up to 17 now. I'm glad it's taking time. It shows you're all thinking about this. How could this be a good question? But also, how could it be a poor question? Sometimes through misinterpretation. There's my 18. I'm figuring we're going to stick at 18 again. So let's see how popular each answer has been. Okay. So the vast majority of you say, are you hoping to die is wrong. One of you thinks that last one is wrong. One of you is in for a pleasant surprise. These are the two inappropriate ones. Let's just consider again these four for a moment, please. Have you been thinking about dying? Now, that's not clearly asking about suicide, but it is a door opener. It's a question that if the person says yes, you can follow up with a more direct question. There's nothing wrong with doing that at all. Number two, are you considering suicide? That is no judgment, no emotion, out and out asking the question. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. In four words, we've had the most uncomfortable conversation of our life. Number three, we're back to that positivity again, aren't we? We don't want that positive language. Hope is a positive thing. Number four is a really interesting one. And congratulations to the one person that chose it. Because most people think that that's a good way of asking let me tell you a true story on this. Two and a half years ago, the little dog and I were delivering trainer training in suicide prevention. And one of our learners was a trainer up in the West Midlands. And she asked this question of a young learner. And that young learner replied, no, the way I'm thinking of doing it isn't going to hurt at all.
So we need to be clear in what we're asking. Some key points for you to take away from that, please. Ask outright, but not bluntly. No ambiguity, please. And there isn't anything wrong with that soft form of question, providing it is that doorway to a clearer, more direct question. Okay, let's move us on. Question number seven, penultimate question. Is it true that international evidence suggests that every suicide impacts about 75 other people? Is it true? Is the number higher? Is the number lower? So we've been talking about talking to someone considering suicide. Now we're thinking about those affected, those left behind. Is it true? About 75 people were impacted by every suicide. Is it higher or is it lower? I've definitely slowed you down. I've definitely got you thinking on this session. Good. So international evidence suggests that every suicide impacts approximately 75 other people. True, higher or lower. I'm at 16 responses at the moment, so I've got another couple to come. Don't forget to hit that submit button. There's number 17. Is number 18 going to land? I'll give it five more seconds. Let's see how everybody else has answered. Most of you say true. The correct answer, four of you got right. International evidence suggests that every suicide impacts about 135 other people. Now, that might sound high, but what I'd like you to do is just think about your own social circles for a moment. So there's you. Ask yourself, please, how many people are there in your family? How many people would you class as close friends? Ask yourself that now. Come up with a rough number. Add your family and your close friends together. What you got? Then I want you thinking about other friends and your colleagues. How many of those have you got? Colleagues who know you in one way or another. Not necessarily close colleagues, but colleagues. And add that to your first answer, please. Then be thinking about people that you know online. LinkedIn, Facebook, if you're a member of forums, anything like that. How many of those know you in some way, shape or form? Again, not closely, but they know you. And hopefully you've got a total from those three things added together. Then you need to plug in the friends and family of those people. And in no time at all, you will pass 135. And if we apply that 135 to the number we kicked off with today, 2023's suicide verdicts in Great Britain, 6,834 of them. If we multiply that by the 135 people affected by each of those deaths, nearly a million people in this country each year are impacted by suicide. And suicide risk increases in someone who loses someone to suicide. And that same research that says 135 people also says out of those 135, about 20% of those have their lives devastated by that suicide. So in this country each year, close to 200,000 people devastated by the loss of someone to suicide. So when we're talking about talking about suicide, don't only think of people having suicidal thoughts. Please also think of people 
who have been bereaved by suicide. Last question for you. Here we go. Is it true or false that the UK government publishes comprehensive advice on the responsible reporting of suicide by the media? So is it true or false that the UK government has comprehensive advice for the media on how to report suicides responsibly? True or false? Final question. 16 responses so far. I know that's going to go to at least 17. Maybe we'll hit 18. There's my 17. There's my 18. Are we going to hit 19 for the second time in the webinar? Or Hey, thank you very much, number 19. Let's see how you voted. Split you. Two-thirds of you say false. The bad news is the correct answer is false. The good news is there is comprehensive advice. It's just not the government that do it. It's our good friends at the Samaritans. If you visit the Samaritans website, please just look here at all the different guides available to the media. You'll see down the bottom there, there's even an e-learning course for reporters to understand how to report suicide responsibly. And there's a very good reason for that. When suicide appears in the news, suicide rates change. If the media reports the tragedy of a suicide, the pain of a suicide, the loss of that a suicide brings, suicide rates go down. But if they report it in any way that glamorizes or portrays it as an escape or describes the method used, suicide rates go up. And I'll show you two examples now, one from the media and one from social media. And I'll give you that link to the media guidelines in chat at the end. So here's two examples. Left-hand side, New York Mirror from the 6th of August, 1962. Marilyn Monroe killed herself. Shows a very glamorous picture of her, says where she did it, even says how she did it and how many pills she took. Guess what? There was a surge of suicides amongst fans of Marilyn Monroe in the months that followed, almost all using the exact same method. Then look at that one on the right, please. This isn't by a journalist. This is a member of the public. And I'm sure it was posted with all the best of intentions. But notice where they've gone wrong here. If we convey a message that suicide is in any way an escape, a way of achieving a goal, we risk impacting the thoughts of others when they think about the subject of suicide. As I say, I'll give you that link, and I've got another couple of links for you when I finished my slides. And I'm nearly there on my slides now. In fact, let's just summarise the main points I've made here before I show you some resources. I hope you've seen from those numbers, this is a bigger problem than society acknowledges. We have to have conversations. Asking someone and then giving them the space to talk about it releases pressure. Just asking someone the question might be enough to bring them away from suicide crisis. But let's think about the language we use. Pay particular attention, please, to anyone who's lost someone to suicide. Not just in the days, weeks, and months that follow, but things like anniversary of that person's suicide, that person's birthday. If it was a partner, the wedding anniversary, there are dates where that suicide risk is likely to peak. So let's not allow it to be a taboo subject. Let's encourage them to talk to us 
if they want to. And then a cheeky little plug, if you've enjoyed today's Quizinar, early heads up, next month we're looking at schizophrenia at the tail end of the month. It'll be one o'clock again. I'll send it out on socials and on emails. So before we find out who's won my quiz, I just want to make you aware of some resources that can be useful for us in both running organizations, but also in supporting people. The first resource I want to make you aware of is this. This is a toolkit produced by a business in the community. And again, I've got a link for you that talks about how to have good systems in place within an organization. And when we talk about organizational support, we always talk about three stages, suicide prevention, suicide intervention, and suicide postvention. And there's some really good resources here that you can use within your organization to think about all three of those areas. When we say suicide prevention, often that doesn't involve mentioning suicide. That's about how do we get people opening up about their mental health pre-suicide ideation to prevent it happening in the first place. When we say suicide intervention, that's when someone expresses thoughts of suicide. Maybe there's a suicide attempt suicide postvention what protocols do we have in place to react if god forbid we do have a suicide in our workplace so have a look at that with the link i'll provide you with please second resource i want you to have a look at if you haven't got it already this app on your phone fantastic charity down in brighton grassroots and this app really has two functions there are sections in there to support someone who's having suicidal thoughts. Gives them contact details for who's there to help. Allows them to do breathing exercises to create a suicide safety plan. To upload pictures of their reasons to go on. So if you download this onto your phone and get familiar with it, you can encourage other people to put it on their phone. People who are experiencing suicidal thoughts, get them actively using it. The other reason for having this is the third section of this app is actually intended for us, for the eyes and ears on the ground. There's some really good advice, really good links to help support you in your role of preventing suicide. So please do download that and have a good old explore of it on your phone. Lastly, resources wise, please do some research into what local charities can offer you support. And I'm going to shamelessly name plug these guys. I'm very close with Kelly's Heroes. They're a small suicide prevention charity in Northamptonshire set up after the suicide of, uh, of Kelly, 24 year old prison officer and her parents set up this charity. Almost inevitably, in every area, there are suicide prevention charities. Please get in touch with them and find out how they can help you. And I'm going to come back to Kelly's Heroes, because they don't get most of their money through government contracts to deliver services. They fundraise. So they offer a postvention support to anybody. So if, God forbid, you do have a suicide and you think, who can we turn to to offer some instant therapy to those affected? Kelly's Heroes can. And if your organisation is looking for someone to sponsor, to donate funds for, to fundraise for, please do think about Kelly's Heroes. Amazing organisations. Leon's on the line. I know Leon works with and has encountered Sherry before the chief exec. I'm sure if I let him speak, he would say nothing but good things about them. I'll give you links for all three of those shortly. But now it's time to find out who's won the quiz. So I'm going to click this here button down here, and this is going to show us our top three. I have a tie here, which will break if we need to use the tiebreaker, but hopefully we won't. 
Drum roll, which isn't very easy when you're all on silent. Here we go. The winner is Yoshi. Congratulations, Yoshi. Right now you can hear the sound of about 30 other people clapping you on mute. Neris, unlucky. You were 1,800 points behind. Yoshi, you are the proud winner of an awesome It's a Dog Thing BDLD t-shirt. What I need you to do is drop me an email telling me what size you want, where you want it sent to, and it would be a pleasure to send it through to you. So congratulations. Look at all those applause coming through down the bottom of the screen that's the slides for today so have i got any questions in q a i don't have any questions in there do you have any questions you'd like to ask if you do you'll see in the react bit down the bottom you'll see the raise hand function and then i can unmute you any questions you've got for me Deb, I'm going to allow you to talk. If you unmute yourself, you can now speak. Uh, yes, Kev, all I wanted to ask was, with regard to questioning people, mm. is it okay to say something like, are you thinking about taking your life? So let me throw that back at you. Is there anything in there that you think might upset or encourage? Um, I personally don't think there is, but I could be wrong. I personally agree with you. Right. Absolutely nothing wrong. Remember, we need to be direct, and there's nothing blunt about that. Mm. We're not going to start a conversation with that question, but when we get to the right point, I think that's a fantastic way of asking, Deb. Okay. Thank you very much, Kev. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Raise your hand if you've got a question. Okay. Well, in that case, all that remains is for me to say, I hope you found that in some way useful. Remember, I have been recording the session. Deb, can you just tell me when I upload this, are you happy for your question and my answer to be included or would you rather I cut it out? Um, I'm absolutely fine for you to use it, Kev. Lovely. Thanks, Deb. I will do. Thank you. Um, the recording will go up on YouTube. I will gladly send out a link to it for everybody. Um, thanks, Leon, for your, your feedback in chat. Always lovely to see you. Uh, and thank you, Nupur. Um, most months we'll be doing these. As I said, October 29th, we're going to be doing schizophrenia. Same format. Eight or nine questions using WooClap. Maybe a T-shirt up for grabs, maybe not, depending on how generous I'm feeling. And what I would also say is if there are any subjects you'd like to do one of these on, you'd like us to deliver a session on, let me know what subjects you might want covered. You've all got my email address, kevin at bdld.org.uk. And let me also, while I remember, chuck those links in chat. So if you want to highlight what I've just posted in chat, you've got the Business in the Community Toolkit, Kelly's Heroes, the Samaritan's Guidelines, and the Stay Alive app. Thank you all for such nice praise in chat. Glad you found it useful. Keep doing what you're doing. I know most, if not all of you, interact with people at elevated risk of suicide. Please carry on saving lives, and I hope to see you next month. Thank you all. Feel free to leave. You're out of here. Well done again to my champion.